Hey friends, my name is Kat. Welcome to my channel, Boss Babe DIY. If you're just joining me today, this is part three in a four part series I'm doing about a closet renovation I recently did. If you missed parts one and two, where I do two completely separate dresser makeovers, I will link those in the video description box below. Today's video is so exciting because I finally get to show you this room I've been talking about for so long that these dressers will be going into. I turned an entire guest room into a full walk-in closet and it has a little bit of everything. It's got some custom builds, it, got, it has pops of color, it has vintage pieces, it has thrifted finds, upcycled pieces, all of it. So without further ado, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in on this renovation. Let's get going. I met Desiree a couple of years ago at a local clothing swap. She runs this incredible vintage clothing store on Instagram called Electrical Banana Vintage. If you have a second, go out and follow her. She finds the cutest stuff. It's not just for Nashville, she does ship as well. I am personally a huge fan of this psychedelic cat t-shirt. But she does run this business out of her home, so as you can imagine, it takes up quite a bit of room, leaving her and her husband not much closet space of their own. So she messaged me a couple months back to see if I could find a good solution for her. This is the space that I will be working with. As of right now, it is their guest room slash catch-all room. As you can see, it is very crowded. And all of this clothing on the racks that you see are just her vintage store. These aren't even her personal clothes. And she has some really beautiful vintage pieces herself, but no way to really display them or keep them organized. So I will be taking all of this out of this room and turning this into one full glamorous walk-in closet. It's definitely going to need some brightening up. There's currently no overhead lighting, so it's really dark. So I'll be sourcing a vintage lighting piece as well as a bunch of thrifted vintage dressers. We're also going to be creating a space for her husband. As you can see, all of his clothes are smashed into this tiny closet. He is a shoe lover, so we're also going to find some good shoe storage for him and get rid of these clunky old bookshelves. So when I talked to Desiree about the design style she wanted for the room, she said she wanted something really cozy, but something that also highlighted all of her vintage clothes. So a lot of the images she sent me were very Amelie meets Golden Girls. So we decided to go for this really opulent, what we're calling Hollywood Regency style with lots of deep greens and these coral pinks. We'll be utilizing some fun wallpaper as well as some really cozy seating and some fun accents. She also mentioned to me that she really likes being able to see all of her beautiful vintage clothes. So I'm going to be utilizing some open shelving. I'll be using some copper pipes as as well as some just traditional open shelving. I'll also be utilizing some open shoe shelving and I'm going to try to do a thrifted mismatched dresser look like you see here where it's two completely different dressers but I paint them to look the same. Lastly, I'm going to display some of her beautiful jewelry in some thrifted photo frames. One thing I do want to mention is that this video was filmed a few months back and I have a friend helping me. She's been in my small quarantine bubble. Um, so anytime it was just the two of us working behind a closed door or outside, we had our masks off. But anytime we were around our client or inside their home or anywhere else, we did have our masks on. So just be aware of that. We tried to keep things as safe as we possibly could. Hello, good morning. It's the day of the install. I'm very excited and very nervous. This is Ashley. Hey. She will be helping me today. She's also a DIY queen, thrifting, goddess, all of those things. So we're gonna be making over this room today and hopefully it goes well. Wish us luck. <laughs> good morning. Are you gonna help us today? Oh, thank you. Desiree and David were kind enough to clear out most of the space before we arrived. So all we had to do was take any lingering hardware out of the wall and remove these old shelves that were in the closet, as well as take down the blinds, which we will be using for the finished look. So we've already hit a problem. We've been here for half an hour. <laughs> um, trying to take these blinds down and these screws are entirely stripped. So we are about to make our first Home Depot run of the day which is very exciting. Let's hit it. Let's go. Okay, so we went to Home Depot. 
first Home Depot run out of the way. We got these to try to get these strip screws out. So we're gonna try that and see if that works. We also got um, a door handle mechanism. So we're gonna try to change out this door. I've got this beautiful like French door we're gonna try to install and then we can hopefully get cleaning and painting. So I don't know what you're supposed to do right Obi, but those uh, drill bits didn't work. We ended up just kind of maneuvering the blind off of the screw and then taking it out. So this time we're gonna try, this one's sticking out enough. We're gonna try to use the chuck of the screwdriver to um, tighten around the head of the screw and then unscrew it. If that doesn't work, we got another strip screw removal set and hopefully that one works. We'll see. We're learning as we go. I think we have to use the other dress set, so. Seriously. I don't understand. Come on. Well, that third option didn't quite work either, so we tried just removing the blind by brute force without punching into the drywall, and it just was not budging, so we decided to pivot and wrap the whole thing in plastic and just paint around it. Honestly, it worked just fine. Now, one of the big pieces Desiree requested was a French door. Not only is it really beautiful, it also allows a lot more natural light to come into the room, which we desperately need. I was able to source this one off of Facebook Marketplace for $30. It was an exterior door, so we had to remove the frame and clean it up a little bit before installation. The hinges for the new door didn't sit exactly where the hinges from the old door did, so I used this trick that I learned a while ago where I take an old painting stir stick and cut it down to the exact size of that hole, glue it, and then nail it in place. I forgot my nail gun that day, so I'm just using regular tack nails, but you can use a nail gun if you've got one. Once that's on there, I filled any gaps with wood filler and sanded everything nice and smooth before I painted it later. If you have never installed a door before, I would highly suggest getting a buddy to help you out because it is definitely a very cumbersome thing and it requires a lot of small movements to get it to set just right in the door frame. Ashley and I ran into a little bit of trouble with this one since this house was built in the 50s and old houses just tend to ship. So it took a little bit of finagling to get it to close just right and get it just level, but we finally got it where we needed it. We're going to start by wiping down these walls, getting all the schmutz off, filling in any holes and sanding it down. Then we'll, then we'll start painting. The paint we're using here is Bear Ultra Scuff Defense in the color Roulette. I really love this type of paint because it goes on really nicely and it reduces the amount of scuffs and scratches that show up on the wall over time. Since I knew there were going to be a lot of hangers bumping up against this wall, I wanted to make sure it was really protected. Overall, this took us about two coats and most of the day to get finished, but it looked so good when we were done. Hello and good morning. It is day two. Uh, we let the walls dry overnight and they look so good. It looks a little bit orangey with these softbox lights. Oh, oh, as you can see, we're <laughs> displaying this beautiful Regency uh, coral is what we're going, we're, we're calling it. Um, yeah, it looks really beautiful. So this morning we're starting by hanging some wallpaper. I gave Desiree a couple of choices and she decided on this beautiful one. So we'll be hanging this up. It's peel and stick, so if ever she decides she wants to change it out, she should just be able to peel it off the wall. 
And uh, then from there, we're gonna start hanging up some shelves. Hanging peel and stick wallpaper is actually pretty easy. There are just a few things to keep in mind. I like starting from the very center of my room and making sure that it's nice and level. If you start from the corner of your wall, you run the risk of the whole thing being a little crooked because it's rare that a house is perfectly square. So if you start right in the center, you know that everything is nice and level and then you can work outwards from there. I also like leaving about a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch gap from the ceiling when I start. For the exact same reason, oftentimes these houses are not square and I like having that little bit of wiggle room and then I'll go back and cover that up with a piece of trim later. Once you've got your piece of wallpaper exactly where you want it, stick it down like a sticker and smooth out any bubbles or wrinkles with some kind of flat edge. Here I'm just using an old gift card. From there, it's just a matter of slowly peeling off the backing and smoothing down as you go. I will say, this is one of those things that's a little bit easier if you've got that second person so they can peel while you smooth things out. Once you get to the baseboards, create a crease with your straight edge and then cut off any excess with a nice sharp blade. You can also cut around in the outlet or light switch holes. It's okay if this part's a little bit messy because you'll eventually be covering it up with the light switch plate anyway. Once that first panel is in place, it's just a matter of matching up the pattern with your next panels and working your way towards the corners. So many wallpaper scraps. <laughs> so many. All in the name of patching. So you can see with these wallpaper panels, they went up really well except um, for the pattern to match, there are these little gaps in between most of the panels, um, which is a bummer, but you know, it was cheaper peel and stick wallpaper, so bound to happen. So um, I'm going to try to hide this with a little paint. Bought a bunch of paints and a couple um, paint markers from Joann's to fill in these little gaps. Uh, hopefully it'll fill them in and you'd never even know that there was a gap there. I got to work on hanging some shelving brackets. I started by setting up this laser level to get the exact height that I wanted for all of my brackets. And then I marked out where all of my wall studs are. A lot of times these brackets will come with sets of anchors, but since I knew there was going to be so much clothing on it, I really wanted to get these things secured into studs as opposed to just anchors in the drywall. From there, I marked out exactly where I wanted all of my brackets to sit, marked where all of their screw holes went, and then pre-drilled into those studs. Then I attached my screws and got my brackets hung up. All of this took me less than half an hour to do. Bear, sponsor me. Your scuff defense is awesome. I want it in every room that I paint, that I live in. Sponsor me, please. Y'all get yourself a laser level. I have never had an easier time putting up shelf brackets. It was, I think, maybe $30, $40. Uh, <laughs> that's off the top of my head. I have spent money on a lot of things recently. Uh, either, way, either way, I will put a link in the video description. Uh, but it is seriously one of my favorite tools I've ever bought. And it's a level, and it was so cheap. Good morning, it's day three and we are working on this closet today. First thing, Ashley is out spray painting some things. We've got um, a poster frame that we're spray painting um, and uh, we're just painting a mirror. In the meantime, we had to do a little pivoting on this closet design. Uh, we have a lot of shoes to get in here and we're gonna try to fit some coats as well. So I'm about to hang up a bar across here for all of their winter coats and then we're going to do some shoe storage underneath and up the sides and potentially over we're just going to try to fit as much in here as possible it is going to be an organizational dream um, we're also going to try to put some hats over here on the wall just for him to display and then we get to start decorating 
I started by cutting down pieces of one by two that were the same depth as my shelves. These will act as my braces underneath the shelves, so I'll be screwing these into the walls and then the shelves will just sit right on top of them. Then I cut down my actual shelves. Now, in theory, you should get out a circ saw for this or use a table saw, but I was just feeling lazy and I knew that these didn't have to be exactly right, so I just cut halfway through, flipped them over, and cut the rest of the way through, and it worked out just fine. And just for fun, here's some footage of me and Ashley painting and staining our little hearts out. She's working on some shelves, we've got a picture frame going, and I'm also working on staining a mirror that will be going in this room as well. So here's a trick if you are hanging or mounting a bunch of shelves that are going to be uh, equal distances apart, just cut some pieces that measure between the top of the previous shelf and the bottom of your next um, brace. And then all you have to do is secure it in like that instead of having to measure every single time. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I hope you're enjoying this closet makeover. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on part four. I promise it is going to be so worth the wait. Yes! And if you haven't already, go ahead and check out parts one and two where I make over dressers that are going to be in that final reveal. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And until then, we'll see you next time.